and welcome to Take Your Time, a Persona 5 Royal in real time podcast where we, myself, Jonathan Dormush, and my co host, Tom Marks, I almost called you Tom Host. That's how excited I am right now to host this show with you. Talk through Persona 5 Royal in real time according to the time within the game that is also the time in our real lives, removed once by one day because time is strange in that way. Time is also a flat circle, but we're not here to talk about True Detective. Though I wish we were here to talk about Loki because let me tell you, there are timekeepers and variants in that timeline, that sacred, sacred timeline that they love so much, but we're not talking about that timeline. We're talking about the timeline of Persona 5 Royal. Hey, everyone. Good to be here with you for episode 14. Ten times. Ten t- 11 with you. Uh, of course, <laughs> thank you all so much for joining us uh, as we continue our playthrough of Persona 5 Royal. Uh, we're going to be talking this week about July 5th through July 11th. Uh, hopefully, by now, if you hadn't listened to last week's episode, you've beaten Kaneshiro's Palace, as we talked about it in detail last week. Uh, so, if you waited for that uh, week and wanted to beat the palace this week in your game, go ahead and, and go ahead and go back and listen to that episode. But if not, welcome as we continue through some of our free time and some some really interesting story beats that we're going to get to. Uh, But before we do, we have a little bit of our usual house cleaning at the beginning of every episode. And the first part of that is going to be Tom. Tom, my voice really cracked right there because I'm just going through puberty. Uh, Tom, you have a pop quiz answer for us. I do. So uh, I didn't see anybody submit questions or answers for this one. If you did, I'm sorry I missed it. I I have been... I've had a wild week. Um, But... Last week I asked uh, I, my recurring one that I'm going to bring back for palaces of which of these treasure items that you pick up randomly and then sell to EY was not one you picked up in Kanashiro's palace. And the items were a precious bill, a platinum bar, a gold coin, or a stock certificate. Uh, kind of a straightforward one in terms of, uh, you know, the, the options there. Uh, that'll change with this week's quiz, I promise you. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, Jonathan, do you have any guesses? Um, so my, uh, I'm really torn and I also worry that my logic, I've gone too deep into the logic that yeah. it's not even going to be remotely correct. And I just wasted all this time thinking it through, but I, I am 50, 50 between precious bill and platinum bar. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say precious bill. So close. It was Platinum Bar. It was Platinum Bar. Oh, damn it. Okay, so can I tell you my little, like... Yes, go why? ahead. <laughs> uh, so as someone who I don't do it anymore, but I used to love doing a uh, trophy test on Podcast Beyond, and uh, I always like coming up with the fake trophy names. And one thing that I would catch myself doing a lot that I, I would work against because I realized, it for me, it was a tell because it was so easy for me. I would copy some things that were similar in... Uh, to a real answer. Uh, mm-hmm. And one of those things here was that they both started with P and B. And so in my head was like, oh. only one of them is probably correct then, just because I feel like in game they wouldn't have done that, as weird as right. that is. Like, it, it's a very specific thing, but also in my head I'm like, as a as a quiz creator at one point in my life, I would think to do that because it trips up the person thinking. And that's why... I didn't guess platinum bar also because gold coin stock certificate are kind of basic, whereas precious is an adjective and not in a different way than gold or whatever. Anyway, that was my whole thought process. You stumped me. (laughs) You wonderful man. You, um, anyway, thank you for that. I really do love these, excuse me, as a recurring theme for the palaces. So I'm excited to see what you come up with in the future. It seems like a fun way to do it. I'm not like, I don't think I'm, you know, amazing at making the fake ones necessarily, but there are some really silly ones. Like this one also had stuff like inkless pen and stuff like that. Sure. Some very good silly ones in here that I think we'll keep playing at. From all those uh, forged checks, Kanashiro is right. I don't know. Uh, Anyway, we also have some viewer comments to uh, check in with. Thank you to everyone who uh, writes in on the YouTube comments. Uh, you can search for Dornology on YouTube and uh, find the episodes there and leave comments there. You can also find us both on Twitter and tweet at us. Again, apologies if we are missing a tweet uh, from this past week. As Tom mentioned, he was very busy and I, I also was just in a thousand different places of, of some other projects on my end, so I was not looking at Twitter much. Uh, but anyway, we do have some comments from YouTube. First from Ratchet Fella said, it's July now, which thank you. I love time. So anytime we get to mention time on the show, it's a good thing. Uh, this means that the best book in the game, The Speed Reader, is available in the library at school. Go check it out immediately and read it. It makes it so every session you read gets two parts done instead of just one. 
I had no idea this existed. Oh yeah, this is Ratchavel is not wrong. This is the best book in the game. I thought that you don't unlock this book until you get to the like bookstore street thing where you like can get some special books. So I'm thank you very much uh, for writing in Ratchetfella because I yeah I, I thought you got this later and so the the fact that I misremembered and that you actually do get it from the library already is really exciting because that book is really really good. You can finish all the library books in one day. You, yeah, it's it's bonkers how how important it is. Uh, it's bonkin, yo. Uh, I, like, genuinely can't believe that I spent so much of my first playthrough of this game reading double books, like, one at a time, and just having yeah. no clue this was in the game. Um, I mean, it's a dense game, right? There's yeah. a lot hidden in corners that if you just, like, don't happen to go to that corner, you just won't know it exists. That's something that came up with a friend of the show, uh, Barrett Courtney, another friend of the show, Alex O'Neill. Uh, we were t- I was talking with them uh, a few months ago, and we were talking about the show before it started. And one of the things they had mentioned was that there is a certain... You can buy... I won't spoil too much, but like you can buy a computer at one point. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, right, yeah. And it leads to things. Had no idea this was a part of the game. Uh, completely right. missed it. So I have to look out for that when that becomes available. But yeah, it's it's really cool to see. Is like Because, you know, obviously we, we love this game. This is one of my favorite games the last few years. It's wild to think there are just parts of this game i had no idea existed yeah Um, i love it so much anyway uh sasha also wrote in uh for last week's episode and said i was listening to this episode in the car and almost had to pull over because i died laughing remembering my favorite lines in the whole game are spoken right after the gang falls out of the palace it's when ryuji exclaims that he cracked his ass and uh yusuke asks on if hers is cracked and in even keeled makoto fashion she points out that it's supposed to be cracked just absolute comedy gold. Thanks for another great episode. I uh, almost brought that line up last week because I love it so much too. That it her, it's just so it's so bad and good at the same time. I I feel a, a deep shame for us not having brought that up because that is I know excellent. yeah it is fantastic that that is the discussion and it's like it's so perfect that that's what Ryuji would yell. And that, like, it, it just fits each of their characters so much. Ryu, like, Ryuji, Ryuji, Yusuke, and Makoto's sort of, like, reactions there. Isn't it supposed to be cracked is such a, like, I, like, I, I gotta know if that is one of those, like, like, did the localizers put that joke in? Does that joke translate crack and crack? Yeah. You know, like, I oh, don't yeah. know. I'm so curious because it's a very good joke. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I've never thought about crack maybe being colloquial like for specific regions yeah that's interesting i don't know yeah don't well know. <laughs> if any localizers uh <laughs> are are listening to this please let us know if it doesn't break an nda obviously we don't want anyone to lose their jobs uh <laughs> but also before we get into this week's uh what we were up to i do want to also just flag to a piece that i will put in the comments uh from another friend of the show laura kate dale uh who mentioned it on uh twitter to tom and i and i admit i hadn't read this piece uh when it came out because i was avoiding stuff since i hadn't you know started replaying the game uh but laura does a lot of great uh critical assessment and work uh specifically in regards to representation and accessibility in gaming uh and wrote a piece about uh atlas's attempts to uh, fix the the pretty derided and, and fairly so um, depictions of uh, homosexual characters and, and members of the LGBTIQA plus community uh, and wrote about how they tried and, and failed to fix um, really controversial material. <clears throat> Excuse me. Morning, morning throat getting in the way. Uh, but it's a really great piece. If you haven't seen it, I'll make sure to link to it in the YouTube comments and I, or YouTube description. I think I can link to it in the podcast description. Uh, if you'd like to go read into that, obviously spoilers if you haven't played the game yet or anything. But um, a, re- a really great read if you haven't gotten into it before. Yeah, and this was something we talked about a couple episodes ago. And, uh, you know, I... I think we're, I, I was generally pretty uh, positive about some of the changes that they had made, and Laura obviously has a um, a different, more nuanced take on it that I kind of hadn't thought about, so I always really appreciate when, um, you know, y- you can read somebody else's perspective, learn a little bit more about the world in that way, and through someone else's eyes that obviously I, I have a very sort of narrow perspective of the world in, in my, my own world. So yeah, it was, it's a really great piece. I'm very glad that she linked it to us because it is, uh, you know, 
it gets deeper than we went for sure. Absolutely, yeah. So definitely go check it out. And uh, I will, again, I'll link to it. And hopefully we'll have uh, be able to have Laura on the show uh, at some point in the future. Uh, but moving on from there, do want to get into uh, our week of what we were up to during July 5th through the July 11th. Uh, of course, uh, this is the the end of the Kaneshiro deadline section. Um, and uh, the the amusing nature that we talked about a little bit last week since both of us had beaten the palace at that point was th- this funny thing where the deadline is still happening and they're still counting down the days, but you're kind of like, yeah, we're, we're good. We seem to be all right. Like <laughs> yeah. every, everything seems to be fine. Uh, and they like, they, they really do push you super hard before going to the palace to go to the palace as quickly as possible. And then after it's over, it's like, I mean, maybe there's a chance, but yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. So um, if you have already beaten Kanashiro's Palace at this point, obviously not spoilers now because you've beaten this week, but worry not. There isn't some lackey of his who has the photos and uploads them to the fan site or anything. You're all safe. You're all fine. But we do have uh, a week of things to go through. So we'll start out with July 5th. Um, I foolishly did not write down about the Yusuke at the train interaction. (sighs) I think it's small. Okay. You, you run into Yusuke at the train. Cool. He does some Yusuke things. <laughs> Accurate. Uh, and I just, on I just like taking note of all these like little moments just cause, but like a lot of the times those train conversations are somewhat forgettable in the long term of things. Some of them, I mean like the, the place of them for me was always like, if you hadn't gone to the palace, they were often good check-ins to really like hammer home yeah. a specific character's point of view of like, maybe we need to go. I'm worried about yeah. this, but um, yeah, the amount of times that, I don't think, like, no offense to my team, but I don't think I've literally ever a single time when somebody says at the train station, hey, we should probably do the palace, been like, yeah, good idea. I'm (laughs) always like, I'll think about it. Yeah, oh, constantly I'll think about it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, And it's not just because I'm an indecisive human being by nature, but yeah, it's always (laughs) like, we're just not going to deal with this now. Who's the leader here, Yusuke, okay? Oh my gosh, yeah. They they don't call me leader for a reason. Well, they also call it because you don't have a name. That is true. Uh, I mean, you do. They just don't, you know, they don't, they don't have all of our names in their VO data bank, which shame on you, Atlas. Um, yeah, come on. Bring that, bring that Forza Horizon tech over to, to Prisoner Exactly. Yeah. My, my go-to was going to be MLB the show, but yeah, for, for it's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically real life sports games. You know how, na- like getting a name portfolio down works. I, yeah. More studios should do that. They should just have that as a resource for all their studios to work from. Anyway, uh, Tom, what did you do on July 5th? Uh, today or that day, let me see. I leveled up Makoto. So this was the one I believe where you go to the, uh, you go to Shinjuku together to investigate stuff. Um, and then I finally that evening after last week's, uh, Chahaya Odyssey trying to get her as a confidant, uh, I finally looked to other people and, uh, got Hifumi as a confidant, which is great. And somebody, I can't remember exactly who, um, it might have also actually been Ratchetfella in the comments mentioned that Hifumi is a really good one to get early uh, just because even the first level of Hifumi lets you swap out party members mid-combat, which is can be really, really valuable if you realize that you are in a tough fight and you absolutely don't have like the right element or whatever you need. Um, so yeah, I would, I would 100% recommend... That's a valuable confidant line anyway, but even just the first point in that is super valuable. Um, I will say, though, really quick, if I may. Yes, please. No, uh, you may not. The way you get a confidant with Hifumi is so, like, weird. It's it's mega weird. I haven't done it yet, but I, I don't remember. I did get, like, one or two with her last time, but how how does it work? It's not, it's not a big spoiler because it is just the talking to her in the church but you literally walk up to a random woman in a church who is playing a game and are like hey teach me and then like she says like she doesn't want to and you kind of just like hang out long enough until she says okay and then like you become friends of it eventually but like don't do that to people don't just walk up to people and be like you're teaching me Teach now. Teach me your it's game, like, yeah. It's like, whoa, man, calm down. Like, you can maybe do that in uh, New York City parks where people are playing chess, but that's also because right. they that they want to be able to school you and, and 
probably make money off of you because they're very good at that game. Um, and that feels like an open forum more than playing alone in a, in a church. church. Yeah. Also, who's hanging? I like. I lived near several churches growing up because I lived in a small Catholic community. No one ever hung out inside the church. That was like just not a thing we did. But if I like, it's yeah. quiet. So I guess you know, if it works. And and the the positive thing here is that it gets less weird after that. And Hafumi is also just like. I really love Hifumi as a character. I, I really, really enjoy her. So I'm really excited to, to go through that storyline again. Um, and then what did you do in the evening or was that the... That was my evening. Okay, that was yeah. the evening because Chahaya was the beginning. Yes, correct. Uh, by or the Makoto, way... Makoto, yeah. Uh, Makoto, my God. Um, <laughs> you you said instead of Chahaya. I yes. went to Chahaya for the first time this evening. That's where I was gotcha. going to um, Ratchet Fellow was indeed the one who had mentioned Hifumi, uh, talked a little bit about, uh, several of the confidants you can go for at this moment. So you can check out those tips on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, I hung out with Ryuji in the afternoon and got him to max rank. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, I went to Chahaya for Wait, my max visit. rank? Yeah. Wait, whoa. Yeah. That, that I was like, how did was, you? I was <laughs> delayed re- re- like processing that. Oh man. I'm now at by the end of this week. I actually have on is at the same level as Ryuji. I like I was saying this earlier, but like I got him to seven, and then I was like, "Cam, okay, good." <laughs> like, I love <laughs> Ryuji, but like I've just been prioritizing other people after I got him to seven. I so like I didn't do Ryuji's very early in the first game, even though he was in my party a lot of the time. So I just decided to do it this time uh, because I I did focus on ons uh, the first time I played because spoilers that was who i romanced at first but um i was not focused on ryuji again because in my first playthrough i didn't really like him that much but yeah i've just been sort of on a kick with it and uh got him to max max rank and it was it was you know uh, it was a a heartwarming moment to feel like oh yeah we're we're really bonded in that way it meant a lot good yeah that's great i love ryuji yeah i have i've really come around and and feel silly forever feeling like i uh played into the stereotypes of who that boy is because he is a good good boy uh anyway what did you do on july 6th july 6th uh i got another slacking off in class thing which was great so i read the video game cheat book uh nice excuse me and then um that afternoon i leveled on up to i think i think six at that point uh and then in the evening i leveled kawakami um and kawakami is getting kind of deeper into her story a little bit my goal was or i'll get into this later but yeah i leveled kawakami again cool uh i did uh as well that evening kawakami i got up to rank five that evening uh, and then uh, Takemi, I hung out with during the day to get her to rank seven, which also got me to guts level four. Hey, so, congrats. Which is a very important guts level. So I'm very, yeah. very happy about that. Now you can go befriend EY. I can finally find out what's in the bag. <laughs> um, can finally ask him about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I also know that because I think, is it Takemi's? rank that also gets halted because of guts uh no i believe takemi's gets halted to level four charm charm okay i definitely yeah. gotta work on that um uh, the ey thing is so funny too because mechanically it makes sense that they like want to gate off the that confidant path but i love the idea that literally this dude that you see so frequently because you're constantly going him to buy and sell things and then like three months later you're like Hey, you remember you remember that bag from three months ago? Like, <laughs> I finally worked up the courage to ask you what it's it what it is. Yeah, yeah. I probably would not remember at that point if I was him. <laughs> right. But you know, I respect it. Um, by the way, just something I had wanted to mention. It's something that I need to look into more. But I believe because I think again, uh, the patron saint of the podcast, Andrew Goldfarb, had told me about this way back when. But uh, Hufumi was originally like they had thoughts of making her a party member. I believe at one yeah. point. Um, which is really cool that like they they there were other possibilities like that. But we we can maybe get into more spoiler stuff like that later down the line. Yeah, it, it's unclear how far those plans went, but there's like concept art of her with like a sniper rifle, I think. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on from there again, this is a lot of free time, sort of the beginning of the week, but uh, let's definitely jump into it. Continuing on, what did you do on July 7th after a little bit of a run-in with Makoto at the train? 
Uh, that day I leveled Kasumi actually, so I believe I got Kasumi to three. Um, and then that evening, uh, I got Oya as a confidant. Nice. And so Oya is a. F- Oya is one I've always reluctant to do because her abilities are really not helpful. I guess is the right way to put it. I didn't go for it at all in the original game. Yeah. Her abilities are all a lot about like lowering security level. And if you're, it's not hard, like it's not crazy difficult to have that not be an issue at all. Right. Like if, if you're using the cover system, well, you, your security level will only very rarely go up. And if it does, it will go down pretty quickly after that. Usually, um, but she's an interesting story as well, and I I wanted to get her just to get her to. And also, her, like, flash forward with Sai mm-hmm. is, like, one of the only ones that is legit. Where Sai is like, the amount of good press you got was, like, unnatural. You must have <laughs> had somebody in the media helping you, didn't you? And it's like, oh, that's, like, a, re- that's a good observation, actually, Sai. Like, that's... Yeah. That's dead on. Nice job. <laughs> That's a little bit different from being like, hmm, you were able to get these abilities that no one else had. You must have had someone creating cards of some type to give you a bit if she doesn't do that. But like she gets very particular. But yeah, that one. You must have made a, had someone mentally training your mind for all of the hardships you had to endure. It's like, what? All right now. Um, that's, that's good to know. I might do that one just to see that scene then. But yeah, I never, I think... Again, I think Andrew might have told me, don't worry about Oya oh, yeah, at some point, because this was a moment when, like, uh, as we're going through, and I'm sure maybe people who are playing for the first time, like, suddenly you have so many confidants to be able to d- contend with right now, and it really is, yeah. like, picking and choosing. And so I think I just ended up not going for her here and then just never did down the line. Um, yeah, she's she's worth doing just because she's, like, she's kind of an interesting story, but, like, generally she's there are a couple confidants in this game that I just, like, absolutely did not prioritize and didn't care about and oya is sort of the perfect storm of like i didn't really care about her story much and i also didn't really care about her abilities much yeah it's but i i I still maxed her out the first time i played just because i was trying to max everyone yeah but yeah i i think especially for the base game if you're like a trophy hunter like me and the base game i never platinumed it but it was a much more difficult platinum and you had to do a lot of things like i could understand going for every confidant at that point but like definitely for people who are playing for the first time like you will have to make those choices. Do not worry about not being able to, if you can't find the time to max out everyone, like focus yeah. on the confidants you want to either for, you know, skills or cause you like the characters, but it's, it is worth taking the time to play into the paths that you actually care about. Um, right. Versus trying to max everything out on your first go through, unless you're playing the base game to platinum it. Um, or unless you're really extra, in um, which case, more power to you. Yeah, good uh, good luck. I I I would never define myself as extra. Um <laughs> I was trying to think of what the opposite of extra is, but I couldn't, and I feel like that's a sign of how early it is right now. Anyway, also that day, um <laughs> you I did want to mention there is a question in class that you assist on with. Uh it's one of those uh she's like, I need the answer and I don't know this. Quick, let's take a long time in class to talk about this while the teacher is <laughs> yeah. looking at me. And uh, see if we can answer this question together. And, of course, you can help her out. It's, it's all food-based, I believe. It's, it's got to do yeah. with uh, noodles, I think, at the end of it. Um, mm-hmm. It's about that. Well, it's kind of alluding to what's coming up, right? Where it's yes. about the, like, uh, Tanabata Festival and, like, what its, um, what its uh, like, signature food is. And then yeah. that's a thing that gets brought up later in the week. Very good call, yeah. But uh, I love those moments where you're trying to help out a classmate because it is it's such an exaggeratedly long amount of time yeah Yeah. uh anyway for that day i hung out with makoto for the first time uh that was me finally starting the makoto confidant Hmm. um and then i hung out with mishima in the evening and got him to rank four um i forget what exactly that one was it might have been the one where we get stood up by girls on the fan site (laughs) <laughs> that he was hoping to hang out with, but I think that might be right. Yeah, um, that's a that's a funny one to go through, especially just because you have the um, the whole back and forth with him, obviously about uh, him being your PR person, and always just being like, "But uh, I don't know what you're talking about, my guy." 
Um, (laughs) Anyway, moving on to the next day, July 8th, uh, you do get a chance to read on the train. What did you read? Uh, Uh, I read the magazine about ghost hunting, which got me guts. Nice. Um, I read about, I finished the Medjed book, which got me to level four for knowledge. So I am set for quite some time. Wow. I know. You got level four knowledge before the midterms? Yeah. I don't know how. Because I was so behind on knowledge in the first time. That's real. Like, what have you been doing to get your, your social stats so high? Because I feel like you're you're blazing through them. And anyway, it's impressive. I have zero confidants. No one knows who I am. <laughs> and uh, I have no items. But, you know, I'm really smart and gutsy. Yeah, um, clearly. But, yeah, I read on the train that day. And then it's another day of free time. What did you do on July 8th? Uh, July 8th, I leveled on, so I got her to 7, I believe. Uh, and then that evening, I leveled Kawakami, and I got Kawakami, uh, I think it was to 8. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> because 8, so this was the thing I was trying to do, is um, a lot of the time, the way I plan my confidants sometimes is... Uh, this is maybe spoilery for people who've never, ever played the game, but not story spoiler-wise. Um, eventually, the confidants that are not your party confidants will hit a wall where you have to go into mementos, right, and do a target for them, yeah. and that will unlock the rest of their confidant path. And currently, I have that one for Chahaya that happens at the beginning of the confidant path. Uh, and I was trying to get Kawakami to... Uh, whatever that wall was so that when I went into mementos after the deadline, because I also wanted the door to open up, I would have multiple of those mementos requests to hit at once. Mm. Um, And I did, this is the wall. So I was able to get that request. So now when I go into mementos, because I skipped mementos, I didn't go to mementos at all this free time. I'm going to have two entire new levels of mementos to explore. Chahaya's, mementos request kawakami's mementos request and every mementos request i've gotten since the last time i went and it's gonna be like like i think i'm gonna try to go next week and it's a good thing midterms are next week because i can just blaze through midterms and then spend all of my play time <laughs> in mementos yeah um it's sound, gonna be a busy week sounds like a good time to listen to an audiobook um <laughs> yeah. speaking of audio but no we're not sponsored uh, when, <laughs> that would have been a fantastic place though for an ad yeah. drop if we had uh anyway audible we'll, call, we'll call we'll call them and like see yeah. if we can insert it and post. Yeah. hey by the way we have a fantastic call out that wasn't even intentional um <laughs> but yeah i do i do need to do a mementos trip soon but yeah i, I probably want to stack up a couple more targets before i do that um, that um debate of whether you go right before the deadline or right after the deadline is one I've never, like, I'd love to hear if people have opinions on that because it's one I've never really like felt. I have a good answer for. I just kind of go by what is convenient at the time and what lines up because the completionist in me is like, well, the longer you wait on mementos, the less like days you're spending in mementos. Yeah. That's also my process. But then if you follow that logic, like, you could just go to Mementos at the end of the game and then you're never getting any of the benefits of it, Yeah. right? So, like, it, there has to be a balance, and I, I've, I've always struggled with deciding what that is, even if it's never been, like, a major issue. That was legitimately, I did it that way, and I sort of regret it, so I'm going to try to pop in more periodically. But, like, when I played, I think I went once or twice, and then when I thought about it that way, I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait until really late in the game. And I spent, like, 12 hours in Mementos just grinding yeah, through it for, like, two sucks. weekends. Uh, hey, I, what, yeah, it wasn't ideal, especially for the base game. I tend to try to go once per palace. That's a good call. And it's just a matter of, do I wait till that other door opens up or not? And it's, you know, I think there's arguments either way. So I kind of play it by ear, but this time I'm going after the door opens and then I'll probably end up going again later or something during this palace. Yeah, but uh, definitely let us know out there what you do with mementos because I am very curious to hear people's thoughts on that. Um, for that day, what did I do? I hung out with On. I don't think I leveled her up that day. It was just to start to get toward the next level. And then I also hung out with Kawakami in the evening because I wasn't up for the next rank yet. So basically just a day to catch up on confidants that were lacking. Um, 
anyway, moving on from there, we get to July 9th, where finally things start to happen, and suddenly Kaneshiro's whole organization comes after you, and you have to go into a surprise palace and fight them all. Again. No, that's not what happens at all. You're uh, it, it's everything is fine. He he, tur- he <laughs> you're all you're all safe. He turns himself in. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the I day. Think, I think. The, tri- the like the trigger here of what is actually different on this day is that like the police raid his organization. Yeah. So I think that's the explanation why you're like actually out of the woods now is because they just happened to raid his organization on the same deadline day and so like that happens cuz he'd already turned himself in. So it all becomes a little more public and it becomes a little more final. Yes. Yeah. Forgive me. It's something that like the public is, it's the, the news broadcast. I have, I have written down. I just didn't read that part for some reason, but yeah, they, um, (laughs) they get to a a more public recognition of what's happening here, which obviously is the goal of the phantom thieves to progressively kind of get that notoriety and, and show their, uh, that they are in fact just, uh, as as you wrote down in the show notes, thank you. The poll uh, on the fan site jumps to thirty five percent in favor. So we're we're climbing up. It's still not great. That's still a failing grade by every margin. But you know, <laughs> <clears throat> we're getting there. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So this is a a big day for the Phantom Thieves. Uh, Kanashiro has. A, there's now this public conception of what's going on with him. Uh, but also we get a lot that relates to uh, Makoto and Sai here that I I really. Uh, was interested in one to talk a little bit about. Um, the first bit, I guess, maybe to talk about um, is Sai and and you had wrote down. Thank you for this. I had, I had forgotten about it, but like uh, we we get a little bit of both Sai and Akechi's view on the Phantom Thieves. Um, what did you think generally about uh, the helping to fill out the the blanks of how these characters are interacting with this group that they are adjacent to at this point. Cause Sai also has, I believe a memory of her talking with Makoto about the Phantom Thieves and, and is worried that she's sort of becoming under their influence a bit more. Akechi is just straight up mad at them. He is very upset that they, <laughs> you know, seem to be progressing more and more. Uh, but what did you think about this sort of like dual look at outside perspectives? Yeah. It's the first, it's kind of like, it's one of the few times you see Akechi like mad, right like he's just like angry that they did like that they're getting this sort of like public recognition for doing this um and that they're still out there or whatever so that was like a quick one that sort of made sense the side thing is interesting because basically she's struggling i think it's interesting that she's struggling with this idea of like whether they're doing good or not and like clearly she's still on the side of like they have to be they have to be stopped um, and like hoping Makoto, like you said, hoping Makoto is not like becoming a fangirl or whatever, but like, um, yeah, it, the Psy thing is interesting because she clearly doesn't like them still, but at, at the same time, she's starting to think about like, well, they just stopped this dude that the police couldn't even find, like, who are these people? How are they doing this and why? And so it's a little bit more like, it feels like generally the world is doing this, but also it's a little bit more of Psy taking them seriously. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the the moment that I think on a, another level that people really are starting to have recognition of them because obviously Madarame was a big figure, but this one feels like, especially because when you think about how impactful Kaneshiro was and where he viewed his palace and all these things, like he had such far-reaching tendrils to society at large. And so the fact right. that they are preventing his, his evil reign from continuing, I think really matters in that way of, of showing... Um, Sai, like maybe maybe it's a moment of doubt, maybe it's not, but just having this, as you were saying, recognition of like, oh yeah, they did this, and we like we weren't able to do what they did um, at this moment. But um, we we will get a little bit more of, of some Sai and Makoto stuff in a little bit. But uh, I do want to segue into the quiz that you get that day because just want to briefly mention it has another terrible segue. I love these days where it's like a major palace thing happens. And the teacher is like, did you hear about uh, what's happened with Kaneshiro? It, Kaneshiro? It's pretty awful. Anyway, you know what else is awful answering questions, but you have to answer one. So what is the stars <laughs> angles? And you, you answer. Um, I guessed this one and got it correct, so I was very happy about that. Hey. Um, but anyway, after that, we we have a, a check-in with the group because obviously it's a deadline day. And uh, I really, really love this group get-together because it's sort of that, like, 
everyone wants to celebrate and is really excited about things. And obviously, uh, you know, after having uh, banquet meals previously, like Ryuji is really excited to be able to celebrate with the gang. And Makoto's like, hey, dude, we got midterms. <laughs> Makoto is so the team mom, yeah. like right away. She's She's known these people for like three weeks and then she's already like, you better be studying. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very good moment. And I like how quickly Makoto has become just like part of the gang. It's great. Yeah. She, it, it feels so natural to the group as well too. And, and I, I like, again, it's sort of this thing of like, and I think you had pointed this out um, during an earlier episode, but sort of that idea of, someone who was an adversary of the group becoming a friend and it feeling natural in the progression of that feeling earned and honest and true to like the group's dynamic. And, and I think yeah. working really well here. Um, but yeah, I, I really loved how that all comes together. Of course, yeah. as this was a Makoto sort of focused section, we do get a little bit more um, with Makoto and the principal. And, and this also again shows Makoto kind of coming into her own and, and, recognizing her self-worth and and standing up for herself in a way that she hasn't in these past conversations. And it's in that conversation with the principal where she is basically telling him, nah, I'm, I'm good. Like we don't, we don't need to keep trying to work together at this point. Like he tries to blackmail her essentially. Um, and she yeah. just, she's not having it and is like, does not want to be a part of that. And I, I really respect that moment for her in a lot of ways. Cause I do think it shows the growth that takes place through this chapter. Um, but of course we also get a little bit of a phone call with that principal afterward talking to a higher up for a bit. Yeah, this is, this is a very just interesting section in as, as a whole. Cause I like that Makoto, like he told, like the principal told her to investigate the Phantom Thieves and basically she just comes back and it's like, yeah, they're cool. Bye. <laughs> and like that's like such a good sort of way to get around that to a certain extent um and then the call with the principal is definitely like or like uh with the the higher up person yeah the principal's call with some higher up person is like uh it starts to feel like maybe the principal is like i mean obviously there was that other call with the siu director that like sounded like it was probably with him and it's like definitely sounds like this principal is like shadier than we thought he was basically is the moral of this story yeah it's like it's bad enough that this dude was covering up abusive uh students by a teacher but now he also seems to be implicated in some larger schemes uh, yeah, and so we get a little bit of a check in there again. These these palace closing and opening moments are, are great opportunities for them to do that. Uh, but having all of this uh, really focused around Makoto continues because she and Sai have a a conversation in the evening, um, and it's it's a little bit of a a somewhat tense conversation, I would say. No, between Sai Just and Makoto at home. Just slightly. Um, this is like the... It's less tense than the last ones, at least. That's true, yeah, but it it's just, <laughs> man, what a... Uh, I would not want to be going home at those those nights. Uh, but Makoto, yeah, rough. Makoto has that realization, sort of, that life isn't all about solely good grades. Like, she has found friendship and a purpose in a way that she hadn't had befer, before because her before because her purpose was so defined by what the adults in her life were telling her to do and here she's yeah she's made choices for herself she's found people she relates to and and has um sympathy and empathy for and and works with and you know you're doing some pretty crazy stuff but nonetheless it's it's choices that she's making and, and progressing her life in the way she wants to and she can still be a good student, but realizes maybe I don't need to only focus on getting the best grades in the world as, as the end all be all. Yeah, she says she's found her place to belong, which is like very, very nice, right? Yes. And it's especially, it's a good, it's a good arc for her as a character who up until this moment was very much doing things because people were telling her to do things and doing things because the expectations were placed on her. And this is now sort of after the the dust has settled her coming to the conclusion that like yeah this is what she wants to be doing and who she wants to be which is nice yeah and it, it all really fits together really well for me like thinking about this day of her one still being that very like nurturing caring like no you need to do your stuff you need to be good students you need to study for your midterms but also yeah. having that self-worth of like 
nah, we're good principal. I, I found out they're all okay, so you don't need to worry about this. See you later. I'll do well getting into university on my own. I don't need you. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah and, that, and that kind of I think that's important, definitely. To, I think you're right. I think that's important to her character, right? Is that it's like the like goody two shoes aspect of her that she got mocked for. It's not like that goes away, right? Like, it's not like it's not that she's this completely different person. It's just yep. like she knows what parts of her she likes about herself now. And like, is and the fact that she is, you know, very studious and responsible and wants others to be it doesn't go away just because she's like found her place it's that's that's who she is and like i think that's important right that yeah. it's not just that her her world has changed it's that she like is able to figure out herself more confidently yeah. which yeah. is great and we we see that in a lot of different ways in this day which is a really great way for all of that to take place i think but of course then through all of this you get a free evening uh, which is a really funny sort of thing to just drop in there. What did you do with your free time in between all of these sort of character moments? Oh, uh, what did I do? Um, I don't even remember. Oh, I hung out with a catchy. I did That's too. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't level him. I just got him, just hung out with him. Same. Gave him some vitamins. Oh, I haven't <laughs> given a gift to anyone yet. Oh, it's super valuable. Yeah. I know I should. I just... I always like, look up a gift guide. <laughs> I see people hang, like free to hang out, but I'm also like, but I could up my confidant level with this person. So I just go for that. Sure. Naturally. Yeah. But, uh, I guess I'll go be nice to some friends sometime just for the sake <laughs> of it. Uh, anyway, so you do have that evening, uh, free evening. I hung out with the catchy as well, but before that day ends, we do get a little bit more because we get another flash forward to Sai who finally becomes a confidant. Hooray. She's starting to come around, starting to believe you. Which I think pairs really nicely with the scene earlier in the day of her realizing what they we were they were capable of when it came to Kamashiro. Yeah. Um, but of course, yeah, this is nice. This is. I just wish. Go ahead. Sorry. I do wish that Sai got her own flash forward. Like I wish that in the moment where you get her as a confidant, it would flash forward to like an hour later in the conversation, and Sai would be <laughs> like, "You must have had somebody within the police helping you." during the interrogation process answer me <laughs> <laughs> i'll never tell uh yeah. god that would have been so fu- if this was like a more if this was played as a more comedic game that absolutely that would be so <laughs> yeah. oh my god uh anyway Sai becomes your confidant and you realize your next target sort of is medjet right uh, she she pulls open the case file smacks it open on the desk and there is a, a green sort of looking piece of paper with Medjet written on it. Right. And uh, Medjet is the the magazine, right? That I read earlier for knowledge and that is mentioned. I read this week too. In, yeah. Yeah. It, it re- mentioned in passing here and there is this like hacker group as Sai also like calls them. The, the funny thing here that, or the interesting thing here is I think that this is really clever. I think that this is really necessary pacing wise within the game that you've now had three palaces with targets that are very escalating in scale, but similar in sort of execution and pattern. And now with this fourth one, it's th- it's messing with the playbook a little bit where Sai is like, they weren't your target, you were their target. And this is like an entirely online group. So like, Ha- like what the heck happened here basically is what she's saying and so and like being like the methods you've described wouldn't work in a case like this and so it's really clever because right as not that it's getting stale but right as the game could be getting stale in its formula it very quickly is like okay this is going to be different. Let's see how it goes and suddenly you're back into this you're thrown out of the rhythm that it's put you in and you're back into this like state of like oh i wonder what's going to happen i wonder how this is going to go because you've become experts at the other type of changing hearts and now you get this new fresh thing and i think that's really really good timing and really clever on the the designer's parts absolutely i also think because it puts you in this place of for me at least i when i know that there is a like i have a face and a name <clears throat> and as soon as i have that all of my time in any cutscene is like looking out for that face maybe in the background to show up or like when they come right. in knowing immediately 
knowing if I hear the name, it's something really important. Here, we have the name of this organization, but we don't have a face. We don't have any sort of identity that we can associate this with other than the book that we've read. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a really great, I think with you, totally agree, like the pacing change that it allows for is really perfectly timed here. Um, but moving on before we get into the Medjed case, which will come uh, in, in days to follow, uh, July 10th, we, we got a little bit more of a story day. Um, yeah. So in the morning, Sojiro has to end up leaving uh, because he uh, is talking to someone on the phone about a printer, you know, things a normal coffee shop owner would be talking about with people. Um, and he has to head out for the day and essentially asks you to kind of take over the joint and and keep watch of the shop. Correct? That's today. I'm not... Okay. Yes. Good. Basically. Sorry, I thought I was going crazy for a second. No, 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 you're uh, good. Anyway, that's what happens with <laughs> allergies. Uh, anyway, we... Uh, so we have this day. I, I like so far where this comes in because by now probably you've hung out with Sojuro once or twice and you have at least a couple concepts of the idea that he has things going on outside the shop. Like he, he's right. not he's not sort of... As a teenager, that thing of thinking, or as a kid, like, oh, my teachers just just exist at school. Like, this guy doesn't just exist to run the shop. He has other things going on in his life, and this is another sort of, like, wrinkle in that going on. Yeah. And um, depending on how far you've gotten with his confidant, which does, like, I think, cap at four um, at this point in this story, uh, you know, there there's different interpretations of these calls he keeps getting, too, of, like, he's presented as sort of a ladies man player right and that's like kind of what the implication is supposed to be here but also if you've done some of the confidant things you know that there's like more going on with him than just that and so yeah this is this is supposed to be giving you little hints at that yeah absolutely but we also uh get a wider look at things while uh Joker is is busy making coffee and curry for for customers. Uh, we get a check in with the SIU director who is talking with someone also on the phone, uh, and I think this is a. I was surprised because I felt like this was a somewhat more revealing conversation, I guess, than I remember oh, yeah. happening this early in the game. Um, the dial turns up quick with this. One. Yeah, this is essentially like they have uh, recognition, like the SIU director and whoever they're speaking with who they intimate is obviously someone important because it would be, you know, they're talking to the future prime minister. So of course they right. understand who they're, who the gravity to which these things can mean, but they talk about, you know, having an understanding of these mental shutdowns and the phantom thieves and the metaverse. Like they, yeah. I think he name drops the metaverse at some point during the Yeah. He says that the phantom thieves risk exposing the metaverse to the world, which yes. means that he, he and they knew about it already. Yes. Yeah. Which is unbelievable that that came up at this point. I was, yeah. I, this, this happening was something that was totally out of my mind. And I love that this happens here, especially off the back of, you know, now a couple of palaces of someone else possibly being in, uh, right. th these palaces and, and this mysterious figure that could be there too, really tripping things up. It is really great to give some sort of weight and gravity to that threat here. Yeah. And also you get a more tangible look at kind of what the, the larger sort of like just the le less jumping rock to rock, right? Like this is, this is the thing of you've been going from kind of enemy to enemy to enemy and the game is sort of shifting things up with Medjid. But again, it's still just sort of like the next enemy. This is now giving you a really cl much clearer villain of where he's like very explicitly saying, we know about the metaverse and the way we should deal with the phantom thieves is by basically framing them for the mental shutdowns that are happening and then they'll destroy themselves is what he's saying and like that's now like oh there's this bigger threat to the phantom thieves and to you that you don't that they don't even know about yet right and like whether that ties into the medjed stuff right now you don't really know but very clearly this is like oh this is more this is real now because they know about this stuff that previously we thought was completely secret and no one would be able to catch us. And now there's stakes. Yeah. It's, I, I think you mentioning sort of like jumping from rock to rock really puts it kind of perfectly because it, it is that thing of right now it's been a very fun, like case of the week game. We're, we're very right. much going through an episodic storyline, but there is this more uh, narrative through line, this, the emphasis of 
a, a bigger bad and what's happening out there in the ether that we're finally getting clued into it. And as you said, it, it gives stakes for the player, even if the characters have no recognition of this just yet. But like, yeah, it tunes you into keeping an eye and an ear out for things more than you might have. Um, I really love that this was here. I'm very glad it took me by surprise because I, <laughs> I really, really am happy that this is starting to get rolled out, you know, this early in the game. I say early, we're dozens of hours in. Um, <laughs> anyway, we don't we don't get a key into who he's speaking to other than him saying the future prime minister, someone obviously very important. Uh, but other than that, this, this sort of sets up, as you were saying, uh, a bit more of the stakes for the Phantom Thieves as we go forward. But moving on from there, we get back to uh, Joker at the cafe. Uh, the gang all comes over to LeBlanc uh, to study. Uh, Akechi is on the news talking about the Phantom Thieves and and everything that's happened here. Uh, And this is also sort of a conversation where they decide to uh, celebrate in some way, because obviously that's still very, very important for Ryuji. Uh, They eventually settle on deciding that they're going to go to a fireworks festival after exams, because they can't (laughs) mess up exams or Makoto will be very upset. Um, But again, this is one of those, I think well-balanced scenes of giving you a little bit of them this reminder that they are teenagers and living their lives normally and also embroiled in in much more (laughs) heavy and and lofty things going on um yeah is there anything from the akechi appearance or anything from that conversation that really stuck out to you akechi the only interesting thing with akechi that is going to be a kind of a narrative point going forward is um that public opinion is starting to shift on the Phantom Thieves and Akechi is sort of holding his ground on being like, they're bad and should be stopped. Uh, and at this point, it's kind of fine because like the it's still 35% or whatever on the poll. But like that's sort of becoming a theme of like, oh, well, Akechi said these people were bad, but maybe they're not, is yeah. like a, a narrative that starts. Absolutely. Um, and I agree that the, them just studying and hanging out is very fun and great. <laughs> Uh, but another narrative that also starts is as the gang is hanging out and talking, we learn that they are uh, not having the most private conversation because some girl at a desk in front of computers is hearing that conversation, uh, obviously through some type of bug or spying device. Who knows? Who's to say? Uh, but she's sitting there listening and spying in. Uh, and and not much is is given with this scene, but it just clearly shows you um, something else is afoot. Ooh. Perhaps we'll find out more in the future. Who's to say? We'll we'll get into that. We were just discussing whether we wanted to start talking about this in a spoilery way this week, but uh, I think we're just going to, since it's just a little tease this week, we're going to get into this later. Um, for sure. Yeah. Once we dig into it a little more. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that we'll talk to in the, in the future for sure. But uh, yeah, suffice to say the, the Phantom Thieves are not the best at sneaking around despite having to be mysterious thieves. They're so loud. They're yeah. so loud. <laughs> They're really loud. That's what you get for, for being kid thieves, though. And not ace detectives like Goro Akechi. Uh, anyway, from there, we do also have a free evening granted inside LeBlanc. But uh, what yes. did you do? Uh, that evening, I cheated at video games. Congrats. Tom, and I got some guts up. Don't you know what your job is? Yes, they're gonna find video out. Video games. You know what? All I know is I am bad at button mashing, and that game lets me button mash less when I cheat at it. So Phil Spencer I'm is gonna that. come to your house and give you a lecture. <laughs> um, nice. I still need I to read. I cheated the game and myself, and I feel good about it. <laughs> uh, I still need to read that that cheating video game book, but. Uh, I made lock picks for the evening and also got my proficiency to level four this week. It was really good for social stats for me this week. I'm not going to lie. I'm jealous. I'm actively jealous. <laughs> I'm I'm very proud because I, I really uh, waited too long in the first game. So I think this is me making up for that. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure that there's, if we looked at something else right like i'd be maybe like a little higher on a confidant or two you definitely or something are, as yeah. like as like an exchange but like three at four already i don't think i'm anywhere near knowledge or proficiency getting up i'm close to guts i know but like yeah that's impressive that is genuinely impressive i'm i'm very proud very happy with it uh we'll continue to see 
if I can get other things to level four next week, we'll we'll find out. But I think my kindness and charm are a little lower at the moment, so we'll see. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was what I did that evening. Uh, and then moving on to our final day of the week, July 11th, uh, we get a little bit of an interaction with Akechi at the train station in the morning. Um, again, one of those, him just wanting your insight into things. But oh, of course, he can't stay for too long because you're at the train station. So he moves on. Um, <laughs> anyway, we, we get, uh, I don't actually have this quiz written down, but a memory quiz. That's, um, well, what was it about? I That's don't the remem- quiz. There's the joke, Tom. This was a quiz from Maruki um, about short-term versus long-term memory. Yes. Yeah, correct. And uh, I I think it had multiple parts to it, if I remember correctly. I don't remember. Wow, Tom. Well, luckily, I have a classroom answers page open, and it did. It had three parts that you essentially had to... Wait, you're not allowed to cheat on a memory quiz. That's not fair. (laughs) I do when I'm tired. Uh, anyway, we have that quiz <laughs> and then we also have a chalk moment, which, uh, you know, being at the levels I'm at, I easily can dodge chalk. It's, All right. I dodged it too hot shot. Okay. Okay. You no know problem for me. <laughs> I, if a teacher threw chalk at me, I think that would be like a lawsuit. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Let's not get into that. Yeah. It's, it's a <laughs> conversation for another time. Uh, anyway, we have a little bit more with the gang uh, at this point, and some I some royal stuff that I want I do want to get into before the show wraps up. Um, but you have a quick conversation with Makoto, who mentions Baruki's counseling, and also is kind of like I may investigate this guy. I'm not so sure about him. Right. Um, and this is this is I think just another touch point of like each each party member gets their moment with Maruki. I think it's basically just le- teasing towards that. Yeah, and I do like the idea of like Makoto being like, why is this guy trying to get all this personal information about our lives. Something must be up there. I'm going to find out. But um, we do get this other bigger conversation where uh, by the train station, you run into Kasumi uh, and you run into a catchy and it turns out they both know each other. Yeah. I should have seen that coming, but I did not think about that. Uh, I, I like that they are, you know, it, Kasumi is very funny in this game because they try to tie her in whenever they can. And I think it's a good thing to tie her to an existing character that they already also are expanding story-wise. So yeah, yeah, I like that they knew each other through like their parent or like her dad works at a TV station that he's gone to. And so it, they've known each other through that. It is a little bit of a humble rack from a catchy. Cause yeah, it's her dad works at the TV station. He's like, and you know, I'm, I'm interviewed quite often on television for all of my yeah. fanciful work. So I just happened but, to get to know her. It's like, Oh my God. But the humble brag is a catchy specialty. I think it so. is. It very much is just, especially with that, the perfect tone that he delivers all that stuff in. It just, it works so well. Um, yeah. Anyway, so you you all run into each other, and uh, also uh, Kasumi mentions that she has some good news. Uh, she's been chosen as uh, the club representative uh, to compete, uh, and Akechi is like, we should all celebrate. So you all go to hang out for a little bit, and naturally the conversation goes toward the Phantom Thieves. Naturally, because he asks about it. Yeah, because he is a meddling... East detective trying to get to the bottom of these phantom thieves. But uh, yeah, we, we get a little bit of a question. Basically he decides to ask and forgive me if I'm misremembering the conversation, but he asks Kasumi the same questions he asked you when you first met about the phantom thieves, essentially. Yeah. Basically just asking her what she thinks of them. And she's a little bit surprisingly, right? Like anti she like, I think the exactly what she says, and it's actually like, I, I appreciate this from Kasumi. She's basically like, I like that. Like, I, I like her reasoning because her reasoning is like, it's nice what they're trying to do. But if people just like society just learns to rely on the phantom thieves to fix their problems, then nobody will like take care of themselves. And like, she doesn't like that world or that idea. And it's actually like, interesting reasoning for why she's not just like the phantom these are evil she like has like a pretty clear and distinct opinion about it i really as as seeing these scenes for the first time i really liked that perspective not saying that like i agree with it but that i sure like you're saying it feels really specific and thought through in a way that isn't just the the general like oh no they could just be no good you know miscreants messing things up or like right. oh they're just in it for for the money or whatever like that this is a 
I can see the value that they have, but also if you think about society at large and our, our uh, ease of wanting to depend on things to make life easier, if the Phantom Thieves can just come in and change someone's mind, that sure makes things really easy if you have a problem with someone. And if they like, if they could be swayed for the right price, if other people could get in to do this, like it, it has all these layers to it that I not not that are necessarily stated there, but like that thought process, I think, is a is a really good one for a character to be showing right here. Yeah. Um, but, and also, it's a it's a fun little bit of intrigue compared to you know the very beginning of this game where you do see her fighting in the metaverse. So it's it's a fun sort of like I don't I don't know about you for coming into it fresh but for me i really like that it's like a you know well how how does she get from this point a to point b right of right now she doesn't like the phantom thieves at all but like later on she's going to be in the metaverse fighting <laughs> yeah and especially i guess without spoiling it but like as someone who knows where that scene takes place in the larger story also right so like i i know a certain amount related to that that happens before and after and so yeah i uh I, I like that juxtaposition as well, and I'm I'm excited that this starts to feel like it's ramping up as well as we get to this point. Yeah. Um, but that's largely that conversation. Then you get a free evening. What did you end up doing? Uh, I leveled up Kasumi. Or no, Hifumi. Sorry. Nice. I leveled up Hifumi. Um, uh, and Hifumi is super extra, and I love her. I think I just started the That was, yeah, that would be Hifumi 1 for me. So, yeah. Gotcha. Just starting there. But that wraps us up for this week's uh, event, uh, as we had mentioned sort of at the top. The the sort of rolling down at the end of this uh, section of the game, but a lot of really, I think, exciting stuff set up in this week for the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, this is that sort of epilogue of Chapter 3, right? And then next week, I think, is a combination of midterm exams and really starting to get ready for the next chapter of this game. Absolutely. But uh, before we get to those next chapters, we do have a couple of quizzes for you all. Of course, the first will be a persona pseudonym where I test Tom's knowledge of all these dang personas and see if he knows their real names compared to the fake names as according to the names listed in the game's name registry. Uh, anyway, Tom, this week's alias for you to guess is... Tornado Devil. Oh, I know which one it is. I just don't know. It's the... It's it's one of the hard demon guys with the... He's the blue one without the, with the big hole in his face, and he's got the big kind of like pole army weapon thing. The problem is it's either Fuki or Suiki, and I do not remember which one it is. I'm going to go... With Sweeky. Oh, Tom, just like Dang me it. in the opening quiz, you went with the wrong of the two options that you knew. Uh, uh, dang. So it's Foo? It's, it's Fuki, yes. Yeah, um, okay. But you, you you got the description down. You knew who, who it was, so I'll, I'll give you a pass on that one. Yeah, um, I knew which one it was between the two visually. I just didn't remember the yeah. name. Dang. All right. There's always next week. But uh, before we get to next week as well, you have a pop quiz question for us all. I do, and I'm excited for this one because I think it's going to be very dumb. Um, so, at this point, the free time is over, so people hopefully have had a chance to explore Shinjuku a little bit. Shinjuku is a, a very fun area in that game. There are lots of bars and restaurants and things, uh, and there are lots of signs all over the place. So, my question for you, and this is excluding all of the places you can actually go into and buy things from, so none of these are included here. Which of these bars slash restaurant slash location names listed on signs in Shinjuku is not real? Okay. So all of these are going to be real except for one. Mm -hmm. Are all going to be real places you can find signs for in Shinjuku. You ready for this? Go ahead. Hit me. <clears throat> There's five of them this time because I just like couldn't resist. <laughs> ready? Beaver. I'm already laughing. Tribe Load Tokyo. Earth Angel. Baroque Frog. Or Nut Boy. Ugh. <laughs> um, so those options again were Beaver, Tribe Load Tokyo, Earth Angel, Baroque Frog, and Nut Boy. <laughs> 
trying to think if any of those are puns on like San Francisco bars that you and I might, both might know that I could. Wow. What? So those are the five. Uh, one of those is not real. Amazingly, four of them are. That's incredible. I would have said you made up at least three of them. That is I know, right? incredible. Um, I literally, I saw the sign for one of them. I'll say which next week. I saw the sign for one of them and I literally just went, that's a quiz. <laughs> that's a quiz. Um, that's a t-shirt. That's a quiz. Uh, that is a really exciting question. I'm not going to give my guess now. I'll give one uh, next week. But uh, if you would like to write in with your answer to Tom's quiz, you can, of course, write in the comments on YouTube for this episode. You can write into Dornology at gmail.com along with any other questions or comments or whatnot that you would like to write in with. Uh, or you can tweet at both of us. I am on Twitter at JM Dornbush. Tom is at Tom R. Marks. Uh, we'll probably be on Twitter at some point in the week. Uh, but you can always find us there for any other general comments and questions about the show, uh, which airs every Monday on YouTube and podcast services. So we hope you'll tune in. If you haven't already, please be sure to follow, like it, subscribe to it, give it the five stars, uh, tell the algorithm you enjoy it so that the algorithm gives us the small bit of serotonin that we need to feel good about our lives. Uh, but also, no, thank you all for your support and your kindness. Uh, we love doing the show genuinely. I'm really, really excited the more we get into some of this royal stuff that I have no recognition of, uh, but also yeah. to get a little deeper into the game as we get it's, to some exciting uh, stuff. I am getting, I'm really excited. I mean, I know we're literally like months and months away from all the like thick stuff, but I'm really excited for you to see some of this royal stuff too. We don't, f like, this goes into 2022. It's just wild yeah. to me to think about sometimes of just like, oh, yeah. I'll have seen Spider-Man No Way Home by the time we finish. I'll know if Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are in that movie before we finish <laughs> yeah. the show. That's how big this show is in our lives. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely had that feeling this week of uh, like, oh man, I can't believe it's already July. Like in real life, yep. it's already July and that's very weird. And then I look at the game and I'm like, how are we only three palaces in? Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's like the time is weird when you're doing this. I it like it is. though. But uh, speaking of time, it feels like it's time for us to wrap up because Morgana is telling me to go back to sleep. But uh, thank you again so much for tuning in for this week's episode. Uh, we, we hope you're safe out there. We hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you as always for your support for the show and nice to steal you. <laughs> <laughs>